So what's going on in the governor's race for 2022 in California? Hello and welcome to Sweet Home California. My name is Jennifer. Well, one of the major impetuses for me starting this channel was because of the recall election that was last September 14th, 2021, where um, a bipartisan effort got uh, the recall election started to try and oust Governor Newsom. And uh, there was a lot of Democrats involved as well because Democrats outnumber Republicans in this state by about three to one, that there are more, more Democrats uh, registered um, three to one uh, compared to Republicans. And um, we had a lot of, lot of activity and there were really high hopes that we were gonna be able to oust uh, Governor Newsom and Larry Elder kind of uh, got the spotlight um, on the Republican side as to who we wanted to replace him. And unfortunately, um, we just weren't able to make it happen. And uh, we were really hoping that Larry Elder would stay involved and, uh, and run for the 2022. Well, now we're into February of 2022 with the primary happening on June 7th and the election happening in November. And uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. In fact, I found an article dated from the beginning of um, beginning of January that said that Larry Elder is not going to seek a rematch against Governor Newsom and that instead he is going to be starting a political action uh, committee where he will be raising money to help um, fund races for conservative Republicans throughout the country, not focusing just on California. I gotta say I am disappointed with that decision, but given the political climate here in California, I can certainly understand it. Um, he just got attacked on um, you know, it, it brought in a lot of money from out of state because he's such a big name. And it really, um, I think, is the reason why we weren't able to get uh, Newsom removed was because uh, Larry Elder is, um, is such a, a polarizing figure, unfortunately. I think he had great ideas. I think he, he would have made a great governor. And I am glad that he is staying in the political arena with starting this political action coalition, which I'd be happy to give money to. Um, you know, I keep getting all these emails from um, the Republican uh, committee, um, you know, on the national level, and they're always using Trump's name. Hey, you know, you got to give money to save Trump, but I'd rather give money directly to Trump uh, or directly to the candidates rather than to the national Republican committee because they are still standing by all the rhinos like um, uh, Mitt Romney and uh, Liz Cheney. So. Um, I think if we give money to Larry Elder's Political Action Committee, that'll help make sure that uh, money is going to candidates that will uh, be more conservative in their actions. So we'll see how that goes. I'll be paying attention to that and I will let you know what I find. But in any case, what's going on then with um, mm -hmm. the governor's race? because I haven't heard anything. You know, Larry Elder, that's where we heard everything was because, again, he's such a national figure that it was being talked about all over the place. Well, as of today, according to Ballotpedia, there are only two... A second. There are only um, two candidates that have um, applied and are going to be on the ballot so far. And that is uh, Laura Smith and Major Williams. And I had not heard of either of these two, so I had to look them up and see, um, you know, where they stand and, um, you know, what kind of chances they may have. Because as I said, neither one of these um, were on stage during the debates that they had um, during the recall election. It was three um, Republicans that were already elected to office or had been elected to office at the state level uh, as either assemblymen's or as mayors within California. So who is Laura Smith? Who is Major Williams? Here is Laura Smith. She has not uh, submitted a photo on, on here, but she does have some connections to a campaign website, Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, and personal Facebook. Uh, here is her campaign uh, website, and this is her platform. I wanted to find out what her platform is. 
and uh, it looks like she is very much concerned about government corruption, which of course is, is definitely a concern. Um, and she is highlighting things such as um, making sure she holds um, office holding representatives accountable. She wants to have term limits. Uh, she also wants to reduce the pay of elected representatives um, so that that money can go towards more useful things such as our you know, roads and highways and dams and, and reservoirs. Um, she doesn't want to have any new uh, taxes. Um, also, she is concerned about uh, uh, Second Amendment issues and uh, believes in the right to keep and bear arms. And she would say, she says she would revoke any unconstitutional laws assaulting your gun ownership rights and veto any legislation of the same effect. Um, here is a video, um, fairly short clip. So let's go ahead and play that and get a feel for um, what Laura Smith stands for. I'm working today, so I'm messy. But as I think about God, I think about the people who call themselves Christians and have children in public schools for which we pay taxes for, and Christians are taking their kids out of school, public schools, why? You're to be a light. You're to infiltrate those public schools. You're to take over those public schools and put God back into those public schools. You can't do that if you're sheltering your children in Christian schools and charter schools. You pay taxes for those public schools. And unless you stand up against the gates of hell, those gates of hell are going to continue to squash you and defeat you. You're called by God to stand up and fight like men and women of God. You call yourself a Christian, you put your kids back in those public schools, and you fight and put God back in those schools. You demand the corruption be removed. So there she was very strongly advocating uh, that people keep their kids in public school. And uh, that's not anywhere on her, uh, on her website that I saw about her major campaign um, uh, goals. Um, but I wanted to see what else she may have. Now she hasn't been very active on uh, YouTube. She's only got 19 subscribers as of right now and that includes me because I want to keep an eye out when she has anything else to add. Again, she's only one of two people that are, are listed right now as an alternative for Governor Newsom. Um, so here, basically the last time she um, posted a video was three months ago. Now, in regards to uh, her thoughts on the public school systems and Christian's um, responsibility to being a light to the world, as a Christian, I totally agree that we are meant to be a light to the world. My concern though with the, with the idea that parents shouldn't take their kids out of public school and put them in a school of their choice is that children are not at that point yet. Our five-year-olds, our six-year-olds, our seven-year-olds, even our, even our middle schoolers and our high schoolers are generally not to the point that they're going to be able to be that light it's all too likely that our Christian children are actually getting influenced by the world rather than the other way around. Our children spend six to seven hours a day in school, five days a week. And how much time do they have uh, to spend with their parents to get that inoculation, to get that education of what their values really are and that the parents want their, their children's values to be. And that's my concern with keeping our kids in the public school system if they have the means and the ability to either homeschool or to pay for a school of their choice as a charter school or as a private school. So um, Laura, I, I don't think I agree with your, your stance 
that uh, we need to keep our kids in public school. Uh, we need to, we do need to be involved in the public school system though. And I think that we're able to, um, you know, be on those boards, um, you know, seek out those jobs of being in the public school system and then try as adults to be that light and to make that influence and, and make those changes. Um, California schools are terrible. And this was a major platform um, idea that Larry Elder talked about in uh, having the money go with the child. And that would evoke change in our public school systems when uh, people start bringing their kids out of those failing schools and put them into schools that work for them. Those um, public schools then would have to change or they would basically closed down because nobody wants to send their kids there anymore. So who is the other person that we uh, have to consider? The other person we have to consider right now is Major Williams. And of course he has also uh, the campaign websites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, so let's see what he's got here. All right, here is his campaign um, website. I like his slogan. Uh, Laura's slogan was the people's governor uh, for um, major. It is time to think major. I really like that. That's clever. Um, like uh, Larry Elder's was, uh, you know, like respect your elder. Um, it's great when you um, you have a name that really lends itself to a, uh, a good campaign slogan. Looks like his platform is on economic recovery, um, school choice, and uh, he's concerned about the homeless crisis. He's got some gear. And let's see what his YouTube channel looks like. And he has a short video here that he just posted January 15th. He's got 793 subscribers, and again, uh, I am one of them. So um, right now, it looks like uh, he's got a little bit more visibility than Laura does. Let's see what he has to say. California's time for us to make a choice. Are we going to upgrade, or are we going to continue to be in a downward spiral with the type of leadership that we've elected for the last decade? I represent something new, something fresh. I know this. You know this. It's time to think major about the future of California. Okay, so um, looks like Major has a um, you know, platform that is uh, very similar to Larry Elder's in uh, talking about the school choice and the homeless problem. That's something else that uh, was talked about in the campaign. And um, I did also watch a couple other videos that he had on his YouTube channel that you get to kind of know uh, what type of person he is and what his background is. And uh, he, ha he comes from um, a background where he was involved in competitive sports. Uh, looked like he had hoped at one point to go into the uh, you know, national stage. I, I believe it was basketball, but I could be wrong on that. It, it might have been football, but uh, he wasn't picked up, and um, and so he's been involved in business since then. Um, I think based on uh, he said he was married to he's been married to his wife now for over 21 years. So I guess that puts him somewhere in his 40s. And uh, so some experience there. Um, and one of the things he said was that politics, even though he hasn't held political office, um, you know, politics is life. And in that regard, he's been involved in that his entire lifetime. Uh, he does come from uh, a disadvantaged uh, economic background that he had um, been uh, moved from house to house, that he wasn't always uh, able to be raised by his, his mother. His father wasn't in the picture. Um, I don't know if he was uh, officially in foster care or if it was just that he was being taken care of by other family members while his mom dealt with things that she needed to deal with. One story he shared, though, was that uh, he heard the shot that an assailant um, shot his mother. She was being carjacked uh, a couple houses down, and in front of a neighbor's house, uh, a, an assailant, somebody that he actually knew, shot his mother in the face and um, she lost an eye. She did survive, thank God. But uh, he had a, a decision to make. At uh, He said he was about 16 to 17 years old at the time. And he said he had the means, he had the capability, he had the knowledge to avenge what happened to her. 
but God uh, put discernment in his heart and he took that, that, that breath you know, thinking for a few seconds and he decided, no, this is not the right thing to do. And so he didn't go after that assailant. And he says that he credits that with the life that he's leading now and that he knows that his, his mother would not have appreciated and would not have approved of that, even though at the time he really felt like a coward. And unfortunately, that is the attitude of a lot of our youth, especially in uh, inner city, that um, if something bad happens to you or to somebody that you love, then you've got to take the law into your own hands and uh, give it back tenfold to somebody else to, to make up for that. And um, at age 16, 17, you know, he felt like a coward for not doing that. But as an adult, he now realizes that that was a thing that changed his life for the better. And uh, so anyhow... Um, between the two candidates that we currently have on the uh, Ballotpedia, um, between Laura and Major, I think I'm going to, um, to lean uh, heavily into to Major Williams. Um, I did put a comment on one of his videos uh, inviting him to be interviewed by either myself or um, This Way Network. Um, we have a lot more experienced people than myself that uh, would love to interview him. So I hope that he will, he will come and uh, reach out to us. Laura, if you would like to be interviewed as well, I would love to hear more of your thoughts as well and, uh, and give you that, uh, that uh, capacity to make your case to California as well. So anyhow, um, the political season is already starting here in California. I would really like to see uh, a lot more coverage on this, so that's why I am starting my coverage now. Uh, primaries are not going to be until June, but then we only have a short time between June and November then for um, the statewide race. Um, one of the things that I don't like about California is this supposed nonpartisan uh, primary. So basically it is just a free-for-all, Republican, Independent, Democrat, all put their name in the ring, and it's only going to be the top two that then are going to be um, on the ballot for um, for governor come November. So, so far no Democrats are, are challenging uh, the governor, but um, there is always that possibility that there are two Democrats on that, on that ticket. So we've got to coalesce um, behind one candidate. So uh, let's see who else is out there and let's see what they have to say and let's get this discussion started. Please comment down below um, who uh, you're leaning towards at this point. If your candidate of choice isn't on that ballot yet, who would you like to see run again, and and why? What are their what are the the platform uh, points that you would like to see covered uh, for California? So anyhow, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, um, and share this video because that's the only way we're going to get uh, the word out what's going on in California and uh, the fact that we still need change. Yes, we lost the recall election, but uh, California is a lot more conservative than, than what the media portrays. And please do not give up hope. Keep praying uh, God is in control, but um, he does use people to get his, um, his divine will accomplished. God bless. Talk to you later. Bye.